Hey y'all, this is Amy Green with Amy and Art Designs and today I'm going to show you how to make this really fun Halloween door hanger. I'm so glad you're here and I can't wait to craft with you. Let's get started. Hey y'all, so I cannot wait to make this door hanger with you and I'm going to tell you everything that I'm going to use to make it to start off with and then we will start crafting. So I've got an 18 inch wood round and this is like shiplap style like faux shiplap it's got these big ridges here um i've got the word boo cut out um, in wood i've got some different halloween ribbon this all came from walmart this one i particularly love because it is spider webby isn't that fun um I've also got a white ribbon, a thinner white ribbon I think I'm going to use in there too. Again, reserve the right to change my mind once we get to the bow making part. Um, these are going to go with a bow and they came from Michael's. I've got these like tree branches with glitter on them and then these really fun pumpkins that are orange and black. I don't know if you've like paid a lot of attention attention yet to what's coming out for Halloween, but everything, it, it, they're either neutrals or they're um, black, white, and orange. I, I'm seeing almost no purple this year in green, very little purple and green. Um, paint, I've got chalk paint in black and white. Um, and then I've got orange, just regular acrylic. And some Elmer school glue because we are going to use the crackly paint method on this. So I've sanded this down and we are going to start painting, um, but we're going to start with the school, the school glue first. So we'll get started here in just a minute. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to use the chippy paint method on this to give it some um, extra layers of fun and um, texture and Halloween feel, right? Because I think like old and funky goes with Halloween. So we're just going to put... Um, Elmer's glue on here and on each section and we're going to paint it um, a, th a thin layer. Um, I don't want to go in my cracks so but this is just going to go right across the whole thing. Um, the way that this works you could I want the wood grain to show through. I don't want another color underneath so I'm putting it right on the wood. Um, you could do one color of paint under here first and then put your um, your paint on if you want, okay? I don't want severe cracking. I don't want the cracking to be so big that I can't see anything else. Like I don't want it to distract. I just want it as like a background. So I'm not putting um, tons of glue. So we're gonna do that on all of our sections. All right, when I was done with the Elmer's glue layer, I used my heat gun to dry the glue to the touch. If you don't have a heat gun, that's fine. Just set it aside and let it dry. You can also paint on top of the wet, the wet glue. I think it just creates a more dramatic effect and I wanted a more subtle effect for this sign. But whatever makes you happy is what you should do. All right, so now I'm gonna take my chalk paint I'm going to paint every other section, uh, white and black. So I'm going to start with um, white. I'm going to do white here in every other section. So and I'm going to get this little black sprinkle or sparkle off of there. Um, come on. Love you. All right, so... Um, I'm going to, I want to keep it on the, it's going to be easier for me to do this, I think, this way. Okay, I think this is going to be easier. So the main idea right now is just to get a good solid coat of paint on there and keep it within the borders of that shiplap stream. And again, we're just gonna paint every other section. Um, and when we're done with that, we're gonna move on to the to painting the edges, and I'm gonna show you how I do that in just a second. 
All right, when you paint the edges, a really easy way to do it. I mean, of course you can use your brush, but I found that taking a makeup sponge or a makeup wedge and just barely dipping it in the paint and then just rubbing it right along that edge is the easiest way to get your edges painted with a nice solid coat of paint. So I've got my sections painted. You can see I'm already starting to get that to be paint look. I'm just gonna take my heat gun and dry the paint just to make it move faster. I want that paint to be completely dry before I start my black so that I don't drag my hand through wet paint. But um, if you don't have a heat gun, no big deal. You can just let it dry and then come back to it. All right, now we're gonna do our sections in black. The white's pretty much dry, which is what I wanted. Um, so, and I'm just gonna put some on a plate. I just find it, it's easier to work with and a little cleaner, actually. Um, I suggest, like you always have when you're painting baby wipes, because it makes it really easy to clean this up. So your jars stay, this black paint is serious. I mean, it's, it is black. Like it is so dark, which is what you want. It also gets everywhere. So keep your hands. I am on the messier side when I paint. So I'm gonna just roll with that. So now I'm just gonna do the black. Um, I'm just kind of trying to be delicate on these edges because I really want the paint that um, wood shiplap to show on the sign. I don't want black down in there. So, which with this crackle painting method, you can have to work quickly. Um, you don't want to go over it too many times, but you also need to get those lines down the side really nice. So, and now we're just going to repeat the same process with the black paint. I've got this sped up a little bit, but you just want to paint all of your sections and then use either your brush or a makeup sponge to go back and paint the edges. All right, so our sign is just about dry, and I just want to show you about how it's looking. See, we've got some chippy paint going on, which is really going to be fun for Halloween. It's still wet up there, um, so it'll do a little more. Um, as it dries, it'll separate a little more, but I'm loving the look of this for Halloween, and I'm going to put it to the side now, though, so I can start painting my words. I'm going to let this dry the rest of the way. So for this, I'm gonna paint it um, just orange. I just got pure orange from Folk Art. And we'll definitely seal this when I'm done. But I just want a really nice bright orange. And I am going to actually, I was gonna paint brush it, but um, let me see which, which I'm going to, I think I'm going to use my mini dauber. Yeah, I'm going to try my mini dauber. Um, this, we're just going to, right? And I'm not going to push too hard because I don't want to slop it over the edges. But it's just, um, see, it's not getting on my edges. So I'm just going to go real lightly across the top and paint the whole thing. Now that our wood cutout is painted, we're gonna take a baby wipe and cut it into four pieces. Um, I do this for a couple reasons. One is because it's easier to work with a small piece than it is a large piece. And the other thing is you don't really need all of it, so it just makes your supplies last longer. And I just take it and wipe around the edge um, where I got paint, because sometimes it does just go over the edge a little bit. And this just cleans it up and makes it look great so that when you hang it on your sign, it looks really professional <clears throat> and um, well done. 
So the next step is to take some 320 grit sandpaper and we're just gonna lightly sand across the top of our word just to get off any rough spots and to make the paint look nice and even. You don't have to press hard. Um, you don't wanna take off a lot of paint. You just want to create a nice smooth surface so that when we, when we put on our sealer, everything looks really good. And again, I'm using 320 grit sandpaper. I'll link it down below. But this is a really fine sandpaper. It's not gonna take off a lot of paint. So make sure you're using that sandpaper or else you're gonna get big scratches in your paint if you use a more coarse sandpaper. Okay, so if you have watched my uh, videos before, you know I'm a big fan of this Duraclear. This is the matte varnish. Um, it just puts a really nice top coat on your painted pieces um it looks really good and it it's gonna give us see it's gonna just kick that color up a notch for us okay and i love that about it so um, my paint tracies here those came from the dollar tree 99.9 percent .9 sure that's where they came from if they did not come from dollar tree they came from amazon um But this just goes on really easily and it just man it makes your color just gives it a layer of pop a layer of pop i'm not even sure that's a word is in a layer of pop i'm making up my own phrases here it just puts a layer on uh and makes that color pop let's rephrase that so we're just going to paint this one coat and you see where I'm getting on the edges I'm just going around with my brush and pulling it out it's super easy to work with and it dries really nice and clear I'm just so, so we're gonna keep painting our word cut out and the most important thing with Duraclear is just to make sure you get a nice even coat across um, all of the surface that it doesn't pull in the corners and then once we're done with this, we're going to set it aside, let it dry, and we're going to start putting together our floral pieces in our bow. This is what I've got for my floor. And I love these pumpkins. See how fun they are? They're just little like black or black and orange pumpkins with different patterns and glitter. Um, and then I've got these two branches and they're black and glittery and they are lots of fun so the first thing i'm going to do though is i want to cut this i'm going to wire them together kind of like that and i don't need this big piece so i'm going to cut that off so i'm going to go right in here and straighten this out and cut it off with my wire cutters Okay, that's thick. Okay, there we go. So the next step that I like to do is start to lay out my floral on my door hanger so I can get an idea of how it's gonna look. It's hard to tell sometimes exactly how wide you want your uh, branches unless you really lay it on there and get an idea. So I've got them laid out and I'm gonna add my um, word boo so I can kind of see how they look together. And I, I do feel good about how wide my branches are. So my next step is gonna to be to get those zip tied together. So you can use floral wire for this if you wanted. And in fact, I tried that first, but it's so tricky with these branches because they kind of spray out from everywhere so my best suggestion if you've got something like this is to just grab some zip ties and tighten those up really good zip ties are like going to be your best friend when you're working with something like this and you want to get them nice and tight and then we're just going to start making our bow once this is all zip tied together and i used two zip ties that was all i needed and it was nice tight and was not moving at all all right, let's cut our ribbon. I'm gonna use 20 inch lengths for this. You could probably go with 18 or 19 inches long, but I wanted to make sure that I had enough ribbon left to have a nice tail um, after I made my loops. 
So I cut three pieces of each type of ribbon and that spider web ribbon is really amazing. I didn't um, notice this until I started cutting it because I hadn't used it before. But when you get to the spider web ribbon, it has this really great feel to it. And that webbing is actually raised on the ribbon and it's not an imprint. So it's, it's just a really cool ribbon. So I'm gonna get my Probo the hand out because I really like using this. It really helps with, um, I think that it really helps with your holding your ribbons, right? So I'm gonna start here. Let me about so, so that I have enough to go in and then I'm gonna go out um, about eight and a half inches and I'm gonna make my loop. See, this will give us a nice tail. And I and I should have a, a little over four inches, right? Okay, let's do our next one. The same thing and go a little over eight, pinch both sides together and we're gonna push it in. Okay. And I, I'm just using the measurements on my probo of the hand to do this, okay? Super simple. So I'm gonna speed this up just a little bit because all you're gonna do now is repeat that process and you're gonna make four to four and a half inch loops, fold it in half and plop it down in your probo of the hand until you're all done with all of your ribbon. And then I'm gonna show you how to put it together. All right, so I lifted my bow up off of my Provo the hand, and now I'm just kind of fluffing and arranging the, the ribbons, getting the loops where I want them to be, getting the tails facing the, the way I want them to be, especially my two-sided ribbon, because I want it to face up, and I want all of that going the right way before I add my zip tie, which is the next step. Well, before I zip tie it, I want to hold it on my sign and see if I like it, and I do. So I'm just going to grab a zip tie, and I'm going to tighten it about 70% of the way. I just want it tight enough to hold the ribbons in place, but I still want enough room to make sure my tails are going the right way, that my loops are going the way I want them to, and then after everything is just how I want it, I'm going to tighten that zip tie up 100% of the way so that nothing moves. So everything's looking good. I've got it on top of my Halloween branches just to make sure that the sizing's right, and it is. And so the next thing is to start uh, cutting fishtails on all of my ribbon ends. Now for this ribbon, um, or this bow particularly, I wanted to be able to see the ends, and I want them to poke out from underneath the bow. So I'm gonna fishtail them so that they're longer than the bow loops. So those um, ribbon ends where I'm fishtailing, those are about five and a half inches long. And I'm just gonna work my way around the entire ribbon, fishtailing each ribbon. Or, and so if you've never fishtailed a ribbon before, what you wanna do is fold your ribbon in half, okay? And then after you fold it in half, you're gonna take your scissors at the outside where the two pieces come together and point them up towards the middle or the folded part and there you go slice and you've got a fishtailed ribbon all right so our next step is to figure out where we want our pumpkins to lay on top of our branches and in relation to our bow now these have a long pick on the end so you're gonna have to use your wire cutters again to cut the ends off and really just cut them move them around get them where you want and then you're gonna zip tie those down and you want that zip tie again to be nice and tight so that they don't move. I like to put my bow on top and check it so that I don't have to redo my steps. So after we get this done and these are zip tied nice and tight, the next thing we're gonna do is put the hanger or the jute rope on the back of our door hanger. I'm gonna show you how I do that without having to drill any holes. So that's our next step. I'm taking the lines on my shiplap and I'm lining them up here, okay? Because then I know it's straight. Then I know my hanger's straight and I know this is. So I've got like this 
and this are both on this line here. This is my um, highest point. It's my middle, right? So I like to go four inches on each side of that. So one, two, three, four. And I use two staples. And then we're gonna do the same on the other side. One, two, three, four inches. And 90% of the time I get this right. Okay. Yep. And then we got our hanger at the top. Okay. Now, we need to attach, I think we need to put this at the top and attach the boo because it's dry now. This process was a little bit. We're just going to set this up top so we know what it looks like. And we're going to get our boo in here. Oh my gosh. It might be one of my favorite things that I've ever made. I think I always say that. Um, where do I, I'm, okay, right now I'm just kind of trying to figure out, you know, if this is here, I want this top to attach to something so I don't really want it in that gap. So I either want this to go from black to black here, or I want it to go up into the yellow, but I think because this can kind of be moved around to fill that space, I'm going to go black to black with my boo. Does that make sense? So if you hear the shaking, this is my Gorilla Glue. Um, it's heavy duty um, spray adhesive. So really all I'm doing by is, is giving myself a visual guide on how to lay this out. Okay. That's all I'm doing is giving myself a visual guide on how to lay this out. Mm -hmm. You give this a really good shake. You do not want it not to shake. And I'm going to put it in the top. I'll show you. This is my empty box. <laughs> Nothing fancy. It's box top. And I just spray right in there. That way it doesn't get on everything. I'll tell you what. This chippy paint look is exactly the way to go on this sign. Because it is definitely Halloween-y. It's definitely farmhouse fun and funky. So, I will tell y'all, and you may not believe me, but the more you create, the more your brain comes up with things to make. Because it just is like any other muscle that you use um okay there we go it's like any other muscle you use your brain just starts to come up with these crazy great ideas of what to make how to make it i'm actually going to move all this because i'll show you what we're going to do we're going to flip it over and put something heavy on top and we're going to just let this sit for a minute until it's good and adhered. Okay, we've got, this is on here really well. Love how it looks. And now we are going to add our finishing touch, the grand finale. Our bow. And our... Halloween floral is what I'm going to call it. Because it is. It's Halloween floral. Look at this. Oh my gosh. Love and love it. So that I will probably trim. Let's see. After the fact. Let's see how it all lays out. I'm not going to trim it just yet. Alright. So this is about in the right place. Is where I want it. Let me see. Uh huh. Yep. So this. This thing has a lot. Let me tell you, this is, um, we are going to staple it on and it is big. And, um, the other thing about this is it is, uh, what's the word I want to use thick and bulky, if you will. Okay. So we really need to get it on here. Good. Our ribbon will cover everywhere that we staple. But I'm just trying to go in and staple in places that are going to, one, be hidden. I'll oh, see, that's not even, that didn't even go in. 
and two where it will stay. Because that, it was not gonna stay. Let's try this one. Um, I'm gonna bend this a little bit in here and see if I can get it right. Um, there. And I want this one to go down here. But I feel like I'm going to have to really work the wire a little bit to get it close enough. I'm going to actually move this up and I'm going to staple this one over here. There we go. Mm -hmm. So that's good and on there. See? Nice. Okay. So the next thing is to attach this now. If someone has a better way to do it with these bows, let me know. But I cannot figure out how to get a zip tie through the middle without ruining the the look of the bow because it's going to pull it down. So the only thing I really uh, have figured out with these is we're going to give it some hot glue in the middle. And then we're going to um, take one of the longer ends and staple gun it. Gosh, I can't think of what I'm... I, I have trouble thinking and talking at the same time. I don't know about you guys, but please don't make fun of my hot glue gun. This thing is bad. This is from Walmart. So, and you know what I did? I tried that TikTok. I tried, <laughs> don't laugh at me. I tried that TikTok hack where you like glue two ends of your um, glue sticks together and you shove it through the glue gun. Well, that did not work. It just made like a really hot mess. And it doesn't. So I need, I gotta buy a new glue gun. I mean, it was a dollar, so, or two bucks. And I have a another one too, so, but I'm gonna get this on here. And, okay, until it dries. And then I'm also gonna staple these down so that we've got it on there a couple ways. And a place, that's why I didn't wanna cut that yet. I wanted to, Get it on here. Yeah, my glue gun is, it's not great, but see, it's, it's on there now. So I am with this one. I'm gonna go in, cause this one's a little longer. And I'm gonna get up under here and staple it. Good. Let me get under here, I'm gonna staple it on this side where you're not going to be able to see it. And then it's been glued and stapled. Okay, so now it's just time to arrange our ribbon again. Fluff it a little bit, get it exactly how we want. Pumpkins. You want to kind of get your ribbon tails woven around the way that you want them. And this is really where you want to go back um, and um, move any uh, remove any glue gun strings like right there I've got a hot I mean hot glue strings right? Okay, there you go. So, again, I'm Amy Green from Amy and Art Designs. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me and making this really fun door hanger. Look at this. Make sure you hit the subscribe button so we can stay in touch. Hit the like button. Um, and make sure you go below because I've got all the supplies I used and where to get them. And um, drop a pumpkin in the bottom if you watch to the end. Um, and then the other thing I want to tell you is um, let me know what you want to see next. I'm here for you to help, help you craft, help you um, create whatever you want. And um, I just, I just can't wait to come back and share another video with you.